Hey, how's it going guys? It's Suko, and welcome to the March episode of the Pre-Order Roundup. Now, before we begin, might as well point this out because I saw it on Good Smile Company's page. Smilefest was announced for this year, and there's actually two of them. I don't remember if there were two last year, or maybe one of the events were smaller, but we got one on June 22nd and one on August 3rd. Typically, they do announce new figures here, so look forward to that. I will say... Not really the biggest fan that they're doing this on the 22nd of June, because the 21st is the Elden Ring DLC, and the 23rd is my birthday, and now I gotta make a video in between all of that. But hopefully the event is good, and then I won't really stress about it. But yeah, if you didn't know, now you do. So, let's get into the video. As always, starting off with the pop-up parades, there were a bunch, a lot of re-releases, but two very noteworthy ones to me, and I want to talk about them first. First up, we have the Zoom pop-up parade Kirby. Carmouth version for 3,900 yen. It's actually cheaper than your typical pop-up parade. It has a gimmick to it where you can actually like rev it up, let it go, and then it's actually gonna move a little bit. They show it off in this video somewhere. Not gonna count the stop motion for that, but in a second, there he goes, he zooms forward. I love that, it's more of a toy than a figure though. I could appreciate them branching out, trying new things, and I feel like Kirby is definitely like the brand and the character to do that with, even Nintendo just, you know, experiments with their games when it comes to Kirby just doing whatever. Something I do want to point out now though, and this is going to probably be consistent throughout this part of the video, uh, some of these pre-order windows are closed on the Good Small Company site. Uh, as you can see, it didn't even last until the end of March. Really wish they would just extend the pre-order period for like, two more weeks, I think that would be fine, but they do pump these out at a pretty considerable rate. Either way, the other pop-up parade I want to talk about is the SP Fluted Armor from PS5 Demon Souls, not the original. It's the worst of the two designs in my opinion, but I say that every single time we see this guy. I already pre-ordered this though, I'm buying it. This is cheap enough for me and I love the Soul series and FromSoft, yada yada yada, always saying that. However, this is an SP, not a large. It is as big as a large figure, but lately they've been doing this thing where they introduced an SP version of a pop-up parade where basically they can't actually make the figure unless they raise the price of it. That seems to be the only like big difference, like the design, maybe the complexity of the paint. It's a little bit more involved, so they have to just ask for a little bit more money. They did this with Ainz from Overlord, which I feel like was mostly fair. He was a pretty wide guy and also a skeleton and whatnot. Here we have an armor set, which is much more complex and just like human skin and like a cute outfit, right? So I get it. This looks pretty much identical to their Figma. Like even the marks on the shields are exactly the same. Uh, so it seems like they're just copying the mold as much as they can. Uh, Max Factory did make both of them. So I think that's okay. But you know, I don't own the Figma. I do kind of want it. I just don't feel like I need both of these, but I've seen plenty of reviews of it. Looks like a fantastic Figma. As far as like the sculpt and the paint goes, seems like they nailed it. So I'm looking forward to this guy, uh, even though I wish they would have just made the original design of the fluted armor sets, but whatever. No point complaining about it. Either way, next up is a slew of re-releases, such as Guts, the Berserker armor. This is a large size, 8,800 yen, as it should be for these large pop-up parades. I'm glad they haven't increased the price on this guy, because it just blows my mind how good of a deal this figure is. I feel like this isn't even the first re-release they did for him, but I, I could be wrong. But I guess my full recommendation, if you don't own this figure, and you want something a little cheaper from Berserk because everything else is going to be like, you know, $300 up to $1,000. Uh, though I think Metacos is also releasing a new Guts, though it's completely different in the design, so why not both? Why not both? But yeah, plenty of re-releases here. Here we have OMG Kawaii Angel. Now this one does bug me that the pre-order window is closed already because it did come with the Sad Cat exclusive. I love this little guy, just a little mini figure of him, but you can't order it anymore, so it's just a bummer. Uh, it's still a cute figure though, but at this point she has so many on the way, so I'm not particularly excited about this re-release. We also have three Hololive re-releases, one for Pecora, Marine, and Miko. Just high quality pop-up parades. You can look up reviews on them if you're interested to see how they turned out. And then there was also the Goblin Slayer, which kind of, you know, borrows some elements from, say, like the Demon Souls pop-up parade 
cool dude in armor. Definitely has more like battle damage. It's cool stuff, especially for this price. I think there is a large version of this figure or of this character. I'm pretty sure the sculpt is completely different. But hey, if you want a budget option of this guy, you got one. But yeah, that's it for the re-releases. So let's talk about something new. Here we have Kana from Oshinoko. Now we did see this last month when they put up Ruby and Aqua for pre-order. So now you can get Kana as well. This one depicts her in the school uniform, which is very cute. I like the expression too. Simple figure. I feel like not many of the scale companies are going to make a school uniform figure, but we do have one from Kotobukiya. It might be out now. I can't remember, unfortunately. I didn't pre-order it myself, but I love the highlights that Kotobukiya added to that figure. This one clearly doesn't have that, and honestly, most of her figures don't have that, and I wish they did. We also had Fallen from Dungeon Meshi. Now, I'm a little behind on this series, about five episodes or so. No particular reason, I've just been gaming instead of watching anime. Only have so much time in this world, but I do want to get back to it. It's been a lovely experience. Not sure how more, like, relevant she is in the plot at this point, but I also don't think many other companies are making figures of Fallen. So this is a nice opportunity to get a figure of her if you like her. Pretty basic though, pretty self-explanatory, looks like her pose is static as most of these, uh, you know, pop-up raids are. So nothing crazy, but it's nice. I think it's a nice one. Next up is Monkey Trouble, Beast Titan, Zeke Jaeger, large size. I do like that they make these, uh, Titans larger, though they didn't initially do that. So, uh, good on them for fixing that mistake. He is squatting down though, so I don't know how tall this is actually going to look, but makes sense. Uh, just a little strange when he's so lanky that he might not tower over other figures. But what can you do? Uh, I feel like the pop-up parade line is going to let down like the fur texture. Like it's not gonna look that great. Doesn't even really look that great in these photos, but I do like the definition of his muscles and stuff, the abs and his back and just like the, the darker shadows to highlight them. Doesn't look too bad, but also doesn't look amazing either. But it does feel fairly faithful, just in terms of like art style and whatnot, to the series. So I'm okay with this. Cool figure, I like it. Now that I'm thinking about it, there actually were a lot of like large pop-up parades this month, such as Escanor from The Seven Deadly Sins. I believe he is the last of the crew to get a figure. The gang's all here in this one photo. Um, they did scale him up just because he's supposed to be bigger, but not as big as Diane. So she got the XL. I like that idea. I don't know how, like, you know, on point all of this is, but, you know, for a budget line, I, I like the attempt. I will say, though, kind of drives me up the freaking wall that the bases changed at some point. Like, not for this series, but just pop-ups in general. So you have the old hexagon bases for the first three characters, and then you can see King and Diane have the circular bases, and I'm sure these three will as well. So it's just annoying. I'm sure if you collect all of these figures, that is going to bug you. Because it bugs me, and I'm not buying any of them. But I think he looks good. Uh, I have no complaints about the sculpts. I would say pretty damn solid, but kind of fell off of this series pretty early on. Uh, unfortunately, like a lot of people did for decent reasons. The anime certainly didn't help with some of that animation, my lord. But let's not be a downer. Next up is Hime, also a large size pop-up raid. I believe she is from Tale of Wedding Rings. I hate how I have to scroll all the way down here to get this. And the manufacturer, I wish they would change that. It used to be like right on the top of the page. Very annoying for me. But uh, yeah, she's a bit more of a lewd pop-up raid, which I feel like I'm seeing a bit more lately. I don't know how I feel about that. I have no problem with lewd figures, but I feel like you really lose a lot when you don't get to like refine the sculpt. Like even just like the detail in the bra leaves a lot to be desired in my opinion. I do like how the scarf is wrapping around her though. That does have a nice sculpt and the colors are good too. The shading on her hair also seems, you know, above average for a pop-up parade for sure. Anyway, next up we have Ritz, also a large size. A cute one for sure. Love this expression. Just makes her look silly and fun, and I adore that kind of stuff. The shading seems like non-existent for any white portion of her outfit, but the creases do help just because the shadows are going to cast on them, right? Uh, but I love the vibrancy of the red and the yellow and the blue of her eyes, so the colors definitely work. It's just not like, wow, this is super good. It's fine. It works. It's effective. Uh, the character's cute. I think that's all they really care about, and I feel like 
this character I've never heard of before from a series I do not know. Let's see. Banish from the Hero's Party. I have to imagine that she's not going to get many figures in the future. Maybe I'm being a hater on that, but considering I don't know anything about this... Uh, and I haven't heard anybody excited about this figure in particular, it's nice that Good Small Company will just make larger figures for characters that aren't really going to get a chance otherwise. I think that is a nice use of the Papa Parade large variant, uh, even if that might not excite everybody. Not every figure is for everybody, if that makes sense. So, uh, yeah, cool. Let's wrap up the Papa up Parade section, though. Here we have Tenka Izumo, back to the normal size, right? Don't know a lot about this character. She's from Chained Soldier. She looks cool, has a pretty face, and I like the outfit and the contrast with the brighter hair. Uh, but very standard, otherwise, she's just standing there. I know she is getting additional figures from other companies, so I'll be excited to see how those turn out. And then we also had Homura from Madoka who does have another pop-up parade. I believe it's where she's got like the braided hair and the glasses, but here it's time to get down to business. And I gotta say, this looks fantastic for a pop-up parade. For me specifically though, I feel like the one thing that really holds this figure back, and I wanna stress that for me specifically, it's just the size. I really wish this was a larger variant because I feel like this is so close to standing alongside the other figures from this series, whether it be Homura or Madoka or anybody else. It just looks cool. I love this stance. I love the dynamism to her hair, how she's running her hand through her hair. It's a cool pose. Looks perfect in terms of like the art style for her face. Have literally zero complaints about this one outside of the fact that it's kind of small. But if you don't care about that, then I would recommend this one for sure. But yeah, that's gonna do it for the pop-up praise this month. Let's talk about those scale figures now. All right, so first up is Alvina Chan, sister version, a cat nun with a rather large bust. And also her leggings are like, ripping just because she's so thick i suppose i'm not sure the side boob is crazy on this one uh and she's kind of like pulling down the top so you can like get a better peek you know what i'm saying i don't want to say this is subtle but it's not as noticeable if you're looking at the figure straight on very noticeable if you're like above it and looking down so i guess it's just gonna come down to how you display her i will say 24,000 yen isn't that bad for this considering how like long her hair is Get a nice chair, the base looks good, the velvet rug and the golden rim, but uh, I don't know, something about like the strands of hair don't look that great to me. I don't know, something about how like soft the hair strands look just really throws me off. A lot of this figure seems like there's not that much like, I don't know, fine details and just like intricacies to the outfit, the hair sculpt. Most of the focus is clearly on the thighs and her bust, and I get that, but I'm just not sure if this fully justifies its price. It does get close in my opinion, so I don't think there's too much to complain about, but I just wish it looked a little bit better. Um, but yeah, maybe I'm nitpicking too much because it's still cute and it's it's got its eroticism to it, so it's fine. Another sexy figure for you. Here we have Ryza and Claudia, Chinese dress version from Fat Company for 45,800 yen. Pretty damn expensive. However, this is a set of two figures and you can buy them individually for like 23,000, 24,000 rather. Uh, they're both the same price. As you can see, they're holding onto some food on a little plates, which I think is cute. Now you will actually get that if you buy the set of figures, but you won't get the hand parts or fee if you buy them individually. So you're getting a decent amount extra with the set and you're actually saving a little bit of money if you do buy them together like this. I do think both of the girls look pretty gorgeous here. Maybe Ryze's face could look a little bit better. I really have no complaints about Claudia. I just like that she's getting a couple of figures at this point and they seem to have done a great job with her. Uh, I like the slight cheek peek back here. That's pretty sexy. But uh, yeah, I don't know, her colors are really nice. Maybe it's something about like the color of Ryza's dress that I'm not the biggest fan of, but uh, it certainly does highlight her body. Uh, even just like the way the shading is working on the stomach and the chest, how it's lighter in those areas, just to bring your attention to it. This color is definitely working in Ryza's advantage though, because compared to Claudia, like you could very clearly see the definition of her stomach, but Claudia's is a bit more like subtle. Uh, just because like the shading is, uh, I guess, less apparent. Uh, just a few wrinkles here and there. But at the same time, Rise is supposed to be a bit more voluptuous. Like this waist, these hips are ridiculous. They're pretty damn good. Uh, it's just funny. Like you could even tell that the thighs, while not like much larger, 
they are larger than Claudia's, but they both certainly have some very attractive leg sculpts. And I guess the final thing I'll say here, I love the way they painted their hair. I mean, the shading seems about average, but I just love the, um, like the hair shine that some companies just paint on to make them look a little bit more, I guess, anime-esque. I don't know why, I just always like that. It just like pops in a really nice way for me. Uh, but yeah, I think that's all I need to say. Claudia's got some like golden underwear. I feel like that's pretty rare, kind of like that. Uh, but yeah, either way, not bad, not bad at all. 23,000 for each. I'm gonna say overall good, but Fat Company, I don't know how much I trust them, but I'd like this prototype. All right, next up is Nijika from Bochi the Rock. This one, I, I have like conflicting feelings about because on its own, it's like perfect. She looks so damn cute, just so cheery and colorful. The pose is perfect, but it doesn't fit with the other figures that Good Smell Company has made so far, in my opinion. Those moody and like very grounded figures of Hitori and Ryo, I do not understand how this figure fits alongside them. Uh, I, I don't, I don't really know how to feel about this figure because of that. Uh, because I did buy that Hitori figure hoping to buy the whole set, but now I kind of don't want to. And it's nothing against the figure's quality, especially for this price, 15,800 yen, there's gonna be discounts and the yen is like doing pretty poorly right now. So this is like a hundred dollar figure. This is fantastic. I just thought they were going for some like cool album thing, making the characters feel more realistic, but Nichika looks so anime. Like, anime perfect. This is very cute. I kind of want this, but like, man, I don't know what to do anymore. Uh, so, yeah, those are my feelings about this one. Also, because she's a drummer, right, not gonna carry a whole drum set in that book bag. It doesn't look as cool as the other characters holding the guitars and whatnot, the, the bags. Very simple book bag in comparison, but that's not really a nitpick. That's not fair to criticize the figure about. Um, so yeah, strange feelings. It's, it's great but I hate that they went with this direction. That's what I'll leave this on. Might buy it, because I love Bochi the Rock, but I don't know what to do in terms of like combining my figures from the series now. This is another weird one. Rin Shima, look what I bought version. Now the concept's great. I actually love this. It's adorable, it's goofy. I like that the company was willing to take a risk in terms of making something that's not just like focused on a character's cuteness, her prettiness, right? Like, they're doing something very different here, focusing on the comedic side of Yudu Camp. But this price tag is terrible for what this is. I'm not gonna knock the paint because her hair shading looks great. I think even the outfit, like the sweater, looks pretty good. Even the gloss on the desk, that is a nicely polished piece of wood. But man, she's like deformed, chibi-fied. She doesn't even have a mouth, which I don't have a problem with. I like that, it's charming but it's just 24,000 yen's a hell of a lot of money that I feel like should be reserved for when they're really like trying to get the most out of a character design and the setting around them. It's a chair and a desk. They shrunk her down. I don't feel like this is justified at all. Even if I like the idea, I just feel like people are gonna see this price tag and be like, nah. I feel like if Good Small Company was making this figure, it would cost like 13,000 yen or something. But this is actually made by Clockworks, who I'm not super familiar with, though I know they are making that cute Bridget figure. I'll put it on screen. She's like playing with Roger, which means that's probably going to cost like 30,000 yen at least, which is not a great price. Uh, at least she's 1 7 scale, so she might look bigger than I'm imagining, but uh, it's such a bummer. It's such a bummer because this could be a very fun, cute thing to put on your desk, but it's coming at a premium cost, and I just don't personally think it's worth it. Alright, so now I would like to talk about the two best deals, in my opinion, from Good Small Company this month. First up is the Sakura Miku Hanami Outfit version for 22,000 yen. I think that is a fantastic price for a beautiful figure like this. And I gotta say the turnaround on this one, because we saw her at one hobby, but she was not painted. I remember having to look up the artwork of her. But she's already up, like a month later, which is really nice to see. This is an adorable piece. I love the way they painted her. Such a soft palette, the whites and the pinks intermingling with each other, the gradations on point. 
The eyes are nice and sparkly. The bright red highlights and the cherries, the little gold up here for the ribbon. You probably noticed by now, but there's a couple of like Sakura flowers and petals running through her hair, but just a little bit. They didn't overdo it just to not distract you or anything. It doesn't stand out too much, just blends in with the rest of the hair. When it comes to her hair sculpts, I believe they're using both white paints and translucencies for the gradation. Uh, it's very apparent at like the petal portion like right at the tips of her hair, which doesn't look bad. Usually I complain about that, but I feel like here they did a fantastic job. Just blends in naturally with the rest of the colors. And I don't think I noticed this last time, but I really like her little blazer that's just like flowing off of her shoulders. It's still like attached a little bit, but I mean, if she's not careful, that thing's gonna just fall off of her completely. Uh, but the colors are nice. They contrast, but they also fit alongside and match up with the hats. Uh, I don't know, man. This feels like an ace design, if you ask me. Uh, the hair twirl and the flow of it looks really attractive. The outfit is just like all Sakura themed, which is great. The skirts, the socks down here, the handbag. And one extra detail, which I think we have to go to the final images for. I love that she basically signed the base. Miku's real. She's definitely real. But yeah, I don't know. I just think her signature looks really nice down here. Like sometimes they do slap the character's name on the base, but more so than not, it looks a bit tacky. Like this is Miku. Check it out. But I don't know, this just like kind of bridges fiction to reality in a really nice way. Even the pose is good too. I think I said this last time, it really does make it look like she's outside and the sun is just beaming down on her. Such a bright, pleasant day. This is lovely. feel like this is going to do well. I should buy a Miku figure one day. I have two, but it's been like five years since I bought one. I think I'm overdue. The other figure from Good Small Company that I thought was a fantastic deal was none other than Yuka from Blue Archive. Now, I don't have as much to like gush about when it comes to this figure. I just think they nailed it. Looks exactly as it should be. The shading on her hair looks fantastic. And her thighs, I know this character is known for her thighs. They look phenomenal, super soft, just like the perfect shading for her legs. But uh, yeah, you know what? This price is kind of nuts, like 19,000 yen. And it's just very surprising because she gets this like pretty realistic computer chair with this nice texture on it. The blue is a real crisp color. Uh, just looks super good. And I think a lot of people were expecting this one to cost closer to around like 25,000 yen. But man, they really killed it on this price. Just makes it feel like a no brainer for a Blue Archive fan. Now, I wouldn't call myself a fan. I'm more of a tourist. I am a poser. I just buy some of the characters that I like. So I'm probably not gonna be picking this one up, but I can't really think of like anything negative to say about this figure. Like even her expression, which is just a simple smile. There's still a gentle like sincerity to it. I don't know, just like the way they sculpted her face and her eyes is perfect. Like, I don't know, I just feel like Good Smile Company deserves props. Like, I think we're all familiar with them. We all like them for the most part. But they really do feel like one of the few companies left that are really trying to keep you in the hobby by making the prices actually affordable relative to what they are, of course, because this is still a $130, something like that. Very expensive for people to just like jump into this hobby and spend $130 out of nowhere. But for all of us like deep in the trenches of this hobby, just like hoping to find a good deal for some of these figures that we're looking forward to, it's nice that Good Small Company usually comes through with stuff like that. And like this figure and the Miku are just prime examples of it. And with that, we transition over to Matikan Tan Hauser for 29,000 yen from Fat Company. See, this is what I'm talking about. This company does not know how to price a figure. Now granted, the outfit's a bit layered. The skirt's got like two layers to it. Nice little pattern on it. Simple, but cute, right? Shading is nice, colors are vibrant. Love her hair, honestly, the bright brown is very eye-catching to me. And the uh, bright yellow eyes too. But 29, like, come on. It didn't need to be 29,000 yen. This might be a horse girl thing. Most of the horse girl figures are kind of pricey for some reason, but at the same time, fat company figures are also just more expensive than I feel like they should be, especially because their quality never matches up to like Max Factory or Good Small Company or Alter, yet they ask for the exact same prices or more. So I don't know. This one comes with a bonus faceplate, which I feel like does not look as good. I said bonus, but I think you just get both, regardless of where you buy her from. It's a very tiny smile. 
I was gonna say this faceplate looks a little weird because there's no teeth. Just a very giant gummy smile, but I think in the end this works better. She's got a nice outfit and I like the way her hair is styled, the hair twirls, but I don't know. Also the boots are definitely sick. I love these boots. It's just too pricey. It's a little too pricey. Probably will drop in price down the line, but uh, yeah, bummer. Next up is another good small company figure. This is Jess from The Pig Show. I think its name is Butareba, the story of a man turned into a pig. Now this one's 23,000 yen, and I'm now wondering why when, you know, you compare this to the Miku or the Yuka. And I have to imagine some of that is just because of like licensing. Uh, I feel like Good Small Company surely has like no real expensive fees when making a Miku figure because they make so many of them. They have to have a deal at this point. And maybe the same thing with Blue Archive. I know they're working really close with that, uh, that company or the series. But maybe Jess doesn't have that privilege, right? Because uh, in my opinion, this looks pretty standard fare. Uh, the dress, you know, it's a little frilly, a little layered, slightly layered. The shading looks nice on the blue. Hair looks good. Cute face. The thighs are pretty thick for this character. I've never really realized that before. Um, but, you know, very standard stuff. Cute pose too. Might be a leaner. I, I don't know. It doesn't look like it would be a big problem here, but this makes me worry for some reason. Just like turning her around. Paints a slightly different picture in my head. Probably will be high quality. But, uh, nothing super interesting in my opinion. And then next up, we also had two good small art Shanghai figures. The first one is Kei Karuizawa, kimono version. 20,000 yen for a kimono figure. Can't really complain about that. I feel like something about this looks a little off though, and I can't really put my finger on, like, why that would be. I think it's just, in my opinion, I'm not the biggest fan of this, like, floral design on this specific kimono. I do like the colors. I think her face is good. I have no complaints there. Uh, and the price is great. But I'm just, like, not in love with this design. I do like how they're gradating from pink to blue, though. I feel like that was done pretty well. And, you know, her hair does a similar thing from blonde to blue. That looks good. I actually really like the colors back here. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm being too harsh. I think I just don't jive with this pattern. That's probably it, um, but I don't think they did a bad job at all. And then last up, we did see this one at One Hobby. Maybe we saw that other one at uh, One Hobby as well. We have Wei and Lan, Pledge of the Peony version, 47,200 yen. Nothing has really changed since we saw them last time. I think it's very impressive when it comes to like their clothing and just how like there is so much detail being put into like the fabric creasing and the flow of it just like draping downward very naturally. It's beautiful stuff. The flowers look very good as well. And there's also like a bunch of cute little rabbits uh, just like decorating the base and one's like chilling on the, uh, the guy in the front there. But my one big problem with this figure is I really don't like their faces that much. Um, I also think their hair, like the shading on it leaves a little bit to be desired. I understand that it's black, but it just feels like they're not doing as much as they could to make their hair really stand out. Uh, and look as pretty as it could be. But yeah, I don't know, like this guy, I'm assuming it's Lan or Lan. Just, I don't know, it just doesn't really look like he's looking at him. <laughs> and I don't know, this guy is looking upwards because he's trying to talk, I'm sure, to the guy in the back. But it, it just looks a little off. I'm not like convinced with the way these two are set up that they're fully interacting with each other as like two people actually would be, like more naturally. Uh, but it's beautiful regardless of all that. Uh, I just... I feel like it's a little bit off and it's bugging me a little bit, but it's not like I'm buying this, so uh, don't worry about my opinion. Uh, but yeah, it's a pricey one, so uh, hopefully this does turn out good considering this price point. And this feels like a figure that you wouldn't want to buy anywhere else besides Good Small Company because that flat rate shipping is going to save you a ton. All right, now it is time to talk about freeing, and it's going to be a little bit messy this time around because there's like half of the figures on Good Small Company and the other half on AmiAmi Ami because some of them just aren't allowed on here anymore and I'll get to that in a second. But as you can see, my Sakurajima is back. This is a re-release for 30,000 yen. I think this was very expensive at one point. I feel like Derek made a video about that or talked about it. This is a normal re-release. They're not doing a bare leg bunny thing here. It's just the figure, as you remember, 
so now would be a perfect opportunity to pick her up if you missed out. And I guess even if you don't pick her up right now, those prices are going to drop, which is great. We love to see that. Next up, who do we have? Black Bunny illustration by Teddy. They're not doing anything too crazy here, but I do like what is included. Like the bunny suit is standard, but I like the red trim, like going on the, uh, the top of the outfit, the armband, and it also extends to her back. Her butt is very round, maybe a little bit too round. It's not like super thick or like ridiculously proportioned, but she's really pushing that thing out because she's kneeling down. Um, and yeah, I like the way her ears are designed. I don't know what you call this material. It's like the lining on a jacket or something, but I need to learn what that's actually called for these videos because a lot of figures have that. One of you lovely people probably know and you could uh, help me out. I would love that if you did. But yeah, the other thing about this is that she's holding a tray of like some very fruity and colorful drinks, uh, mostly alcoholic, I'm sure. But I love the colors that they bring to this figure. This one's good. 39,000 yen does feel like a little bit too much, in my opinion. I feel like if they brought this to like 35,000 yen, I would feel a little bit more comfortable recommending it. But yeah, I don't know, when you compare this figure to this one, Marion from Nikkei for 44,000 yen, I feel like this is doing so much more, and I don't think they ever showed this girl, Marion, before. But I think she looks fantastic. This might be the best figure from Freeing this month, though I don't remember all the figures that are coming up. But either way, just something about the colors, like this rich blue looks so good. The jet black leggings, I don't know, man. The shading on her hair, her face is lovely. Uh, I don't know, she's kind of got it all for a Nikkei character. Not like super risque or lewd or anything. Her chest is big, but it's not like revealing too much, you know? Uh, I guess they're kind of highlighting it with these gold stripes, though. So that'll that'll catch your eye for sure. Uh, but I don't know. Stellar outfit. Got a big-ass gun that she's holding on to. I don't know. It just wins. I feel like they're doing something real nice here. I am wondering, though, because I have no knowledge of Nikkei, does this character actually look correct? You know? Like, maybe the art style is completely wrong, and I don't know. So I'm just judging this from someone with literally no knowledge. But as an outsider, I think it's great. Anyway, let's move on to Ami Ami. Now, here we have some Senron Kagura figures, which normally would have been on Good Small Company's page, but because they're like, I don't know, plus 18 figures or something, I'm pretty sure both of this and the Homer figure, this is Asuka by the way, uh, I think both of these are going to be cast offs like the other two figures that uh, I think they got released or announced a year ago and now they're out finally. I think both of them did bargain bin. I'm sorry, I don't remember their names. But uh, yeah, I don't think Good Small Company wants them on their page anymore. So now they're just on Ami Ami, which means you won't get a good deal on shipping, which sucks. So yeah, both of these two are going to cost 38,500 yen. If they're cast off, I feel like that justifies it a little bit, but they're really not wearing that much. Freaking Homura is wearing nothing besides some like fishnets. Her tan lines though really make this figure a winner though. I've always had a, a bit of a soft spot for Homura, even though I've never played a single Senron Kagura game, but I've always liked her. She was my favorite, just in terms of like character design. And I'm sure this figure is going to slap. I want to say though, I don't really like this Asuka figure that much. I think the Homura one is so much better. Like this just doesn't remind me of her. The weird pointy ears and the suit feels like a bit of a mismatch for the character. But you know, at least they're trying. At least they're doing something a little different, like the belts on the uh, the fishnets and whatnot. But I don't know. Homura is a, a slam dunk in my opinion. But uh, I got my bias, so that's okay. It is what it is, you might not agree, and that's perfectly fine. And then we also had a B-style of Lacus Klein Bear Leg Bunny, so this is a re-release. I don't remember if the original figure had a discount because this one's made by Mega House, and typically none of their figures do unless they hit the bin. So uh, yeah, kind of curious how the aftermarket on the original figure is doing. But I don't think this looks bad at all without the fishnets. In fact, I feel like this works pretty damn well without fishnets. And normally I don't say that. Normally I'm a bigger fan of fishnets, but this definitely works. And last up for the B-Styles is Azur Lane's Chitose Summer Shine version. One fourth scale by Union Creative for 33,000 yen. Pretty good price, but this is a swimsuit figure. She's really not wearing that much. So I have never understood this pose. I get it, it highlights the legs. 
the butts and the under boob, all things I can appreciate. But it still looks awkward. She's just like very gently draping that sash over her butt. I don't know what that's doing for her. I know what that's doing for me, but I feel like there should be some other reason that she's doing that. Maybe not though, maybe it doesn't matter. This is Azur Lane, and they just want to make some attractive stuff. Definitely looks good, if not a little awkward, but the price is right, in my opinion, considering she's so big. Uh, and I think a lot of these do just like drop in price, because maybe Union Creative doesn't do a good job with the, uh, the B-Style line. Not exactly sure. But that's going to wrap it up for the B-Styles. Let's move on to everything else. Uh, okay, so I took a bit of a break. I don't remember what the last thing I talked about was, but we're going to start here. A couple of cheap figures on AmiAmi that I felt like highlighting. First up is Jacko from Guilty Gear Strive from Apex. Now, this is extremely cheap. 8,000 yen. Way cheaper than I was expecting. But she's also a 1 9th scale, which is a little odd because that fits in with, like, literally nothing. Even 1 8th would have been way better, despite how most Guilty Gear figures are 1 7th. But, knowing Apex, the quality will likely be pretty good. Uh, if you watched my previous unboxing video, I actually did open the old Jacko figure. And, you know, this one's a little different because Jacko gets a slight redesign, mostly with the hair. As it inverts now, the red is on the outside. Uh, and, like, the halo is cracked a little bit. But, uh, yeah, you know, that figure is way too expensive. This one's not. This is, like, $60 at this point, or cheaper than that, actually, like, 50 52 at the moment. Uh, she's doing the Jacko pose, which became a bit of a meme. You've probably seen this before, even if it wasn't Jacko doing it, because there's, like, resin figures of, like, Tifa and probably 2B also doing this pose. Not something I particularly like, so I was never really that interested in this figure. But it's so cheap that it's almost like, why not? I already collect Guilty Gear figures, so why wouldn't I buy this? You do get some cute keychains as a bonus, I like that for sure. The exact same pose, just stylized a little bit differently. Uh, but yeah, the size sucks, but the price is amazing. So we'll see. We'll definitely see. Next up, we got a fan favorite. This is Kiryu Battle Style by Digsta. Now, they've made figures of him before. I think there's one additional one for Kiryu, there's two for Ichiban at this point, and one for Majima. And I've only liked the Majima one so far. I felt like the Kiryu one and the Ichiban ones did not look great. And I'm gonna say this does not look that good either. His face looks so off. Just looks like an angry kid to me. Not a big fan. I could appreciate that they... Made him super muscular and whatnot, but he's also so smooth that it looks kind of wrong. Uh, so yeah, this line just kind of disappoints me. As much as I would love to get anything, you know, Yakuza related, like a dragon related. Uh, I've slowly made my way through this series until 2024, where I played 3, 4, 5, and 6, and now I'm currently on 7. So consider me a pretty big fan. I always was, but it, it just took me a while to really sink my teeth into this series. Uh, and I had some extra time in the beginning of this year, so decided it was the perfect opportunity to play some, uh, some peak. Uh, but yeah, I don't like this figure. That, that's the moral of the story. I think this figure is kind of mediocre. I wish they would make the faces better because then I could justify getting something that, you know, it's not supposed to be an amazing figure, but just doesn't look like him. That's the most important part. Even if it's cheap, the character still needs to look accurate to the source material for me to want to buy it. Next up from Tenetal, or for you, we have another Marseille figure. I never really talk about the Tenetal figures on this channel just because there's so many. I don't know how many of you guys are interested in them. I feel like while this is cute, it kind of looks off. I don't know what it is. She looks very pale. More pale than usual. But yeah, just something about this expression. Her eyes are like so wide open that it kind of bugs me slightly. Uh, there is a bonus faceplate with this one. I don't know where you buy her from. Probably Furyu directly. I like this more just because it's a little different, but it still kind of has the same issues for me. Uh, so not my favorite. I think the pop-up parade looks a little bit better uh, for me personally. But options are good. Not a big deal. There you go. I feel like more and more lately, figures like this are continuing to pop up these very cheap, very big, lewd figures that are kind of unexplainable in terms of like how they're producing them at such a 
cheap price point. And it feels like there's so many different companies too, like this one is Modelway, who I've never heard of before. And when I checked the brand down here, this was the only thing on AmiAmi. Maybe they have stuff over in China or some other region, but I've never heard of them before. What you're looking at is a well-endowed cowgirl, pretty self-explanatory, not really wearing too much, just the, um, like the thigh high with the cow prints, which are kind of cute, I guess. This is not a cast off figure, not in any way, just curvy in the places you would expect. Uh, and maybe she's like a nun, she's got the nun headpiece, so that could be what this is supposed to be, but I'm not really sure. But yeah, I'm not trying to just like sit here and criticize the figure because there's really nothing to talk about. It's an unknown company making a figure at like half or a third of the price. And it's really just about will they deliver on it? The design's fine. She's not wearing that much. The face looks pretty. Uh, and I guess we'll just have to wait until April 2025, which is a whole year to make this. Seems kind of long for a relatively simple figure, but I don't know. I, I guess uh, only time will tell. And last up for the cheap figures, at least that I could find for this video, is Haruka no Osuma from Chiyu for just about 5,000 yen. It's a non-scale figure, so she's pretty small at about 170 millimeters. So don't expect this one to uh, take up too much shelf space. But as you can see, she is invisible, which is kind of fun. Now, I guess the challenge for them was to make this a believable sculpt that your brain will actually, you know, trick itself into thinking that there is a girl that's invisible here. And it's not just a skirt and a shirt and some leggings that are just standing on top of each other. It's cool, you know, I like how this is constructed. It's believable, you know, as you turn the figure around, you start to understand how it works. They're just, you know, sticking the pieces together. But because of repose, it looks natural enough. I mean, hey, it's super cheap, so you're not really risking too much. But again, it's one of those situations where not familiar with this company, not sure if they've made anything else. It seems like, at least on AmiAmi, they have not. So it might be taking a bit of a gamble here. Uh, but there's not that much they can mess up, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, yeah, very interesting. All right, here's a figure that was on my wish list. Cherno from Furyu. Very, very surprised that this figure is way cheaper than I was expecting. Not that 20,000 is super cheap, but considering their Reimu was about like 28, 29,000, I wasn't expecting this price point at all, considering she's got the water splash base and her wings are pretty large ice crystals that look pretty good, if you ask me. This doesn't necessarily look like the Cherno I'm super familiar with, but it looks way better than a lot of other attempts. I'm not the biggest fan of the Solar Rain figure, for instance. I feel like that doesn't feel like Cherno at all. Whereas this one captures her spirit, her essence, uh, her cuteness and whatnot. Also, look at this color back here. The red, white, and blue God Bless America icicles. That looks super good to me. Did not notice that until now. Um, she actually has a bonus faceplate, which you have to go out of your way to get, which is kind of a bummer. I could show you on this page. Let me find it. Uh, it's got to be one of these images. Maybe I'll just cut to it if I can't. Oh, there it is. Okay, so she's doing like an XD. This fits her so well. If I buy this figure, sorry about that. If I buy this figure, this is probably how I would display her because I think it's great. I think it just fits her perfectly. I think it's adorable. It just understands Cherno, you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm very happy with how this one turned out. The colors look excellent. Even the way they did her hair, which is using a bit of translucency for the bangs and the tips. I believe there is some more traditional like matte paint, kind of more noticeable back here, uh, but it's, it's good. You know, the shading on the bow, shading on the dress. They gave her bloomers as they should, like most Toho characters should have. Uh, but yeah, there's just the question of where to buy this. And you actually can buy this on the Furyu Hobby Mall with Bai. Now I'm not sponsored by Bai today, I have been in the past. But um, if I were to buy it, I guess that makes sense to just use Bai here. But I've never pre-ordered anything through Bai. Uh, so I don't know how that actually works. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys and just pretend like I do. Also, I'm not sure if you get this shikishi board. Looks like a shikishi board. They might just be showing the art. Uh, but I love this piece of art, and I hope it's included. Anyway, that's Cherno. She's great. Definitely one of my favorites of the month. So I should probably buy this. We'll talk about another Furuyu figure. Here we have Toge Inumaki, 1-7 scale for 26,000 yen. Now, that feels like they're pushing it a little bit, but that's kind of more what I'm used to seeing from Furuyu, which is why the Cherno is so surprising to me, because that's way cheaper than most of their products. 
Anyway, this looks pretty good, but it's a very similar concept to what Eastream did, which I feel like when it comes to Inumaki, that's gonna be the case most of the time, because if he's, you know, showing off his abilities and attacking and whatnot, you're gonna have those big energy effects in front of him, though Eastream definitely went harder. It kind of surrounded the entire figure, almost like obscured it a little bit, in my opinion. Whereas here, it's reduced a little bit, doesn't really like block the character's body as much. His face is completely visible, which is great. Uh, he doesn't get a log base, which eh, I feel like that does add a little bit to the sculpt. Instead, it's just like a wind effect, which doesn't look bad, but I also don't think it looks amazing either. Uh, the two figures do have different outfits though. I think the other one is wearing the traditional like uniform uh, that they wear, the completely blue outfit. So yeah, they're different enough. Uh, that figure had a bunch of support stands. This one does not escape that though for one of his legs, which is kind of disappointing, but also makes sense. You would not want the figure to lean over time. So it is important to have that. And maybe you can like display him where you don't see it as much depending on the angle. The shading on his hair looks great. I think the shading on the outfit looks pretty good. The effects don't really impress me as much as I were hoping they would. Uh, looks very basic, just like clear plastic. I, I kind of wish they did what Eastream did where it had a little bit more of an impact because of all like the streak lines on them uh, or just like the spikiness of it, but not a bad attempt. I just wish this was a little bit cheaper so that I would feel more justified in the price point. Okay, let's talk about this one. I remember somebody brought this up last month when I didn't talk about it, but this went up on like, uh, I believe March 1st or something. So it wasn't supposed to be included in the February video, but here we have Azur Lane's Kashino Hot Springs Relaxation 1 4th scale by Mimiyoi for 38,000 yen. So the typical price point you see 1 4th scales, whether it be Freeing or other companies, uh, they had fun with the photo shoot. The lighting is so dramatic <laughs> on this one really highlights the curves for sure. I don't really know what I need to say about this one. We've definitely talked about it a lot at this point. This was the price I was probably expecting or maybe a little cheaper just because um, this company has leaned a little bit more on the cheaper side as far as scale figures go, but I think that might be changing uh, over time. So, you know, I'm not upset about that. That is a ton of plastic for a chest, so they gotta, you know, pay for that somehow. Hair is very uh, voluminous as it just like drapes all over the base. Uh, I remember seeing some photos in person or at some event where her hair didn't look amazing, uh, like the curls towards the tips of it, but hopefully that's not like an actual issue on the final product. I will say her feet look weird. Uh, I know that's not a focal point of this figure, but I do feel like they look weird. Uh, I, I think they like try to make them too detailed and in the end it just looks kind of off. But I do like the way they sculpted her butt. Very plump, as a, a cowgirl probably should be. Uh, and yeah, she's got a cute face too and this little guy is uh, suffocating down here. Might be the end of his days, not sure. Is this a bonus? Actually, am I on like a... Oh, this is a exclusive version. Maybe there's a cheaper version of her. There's two here. I, I don't know. There's like three versions of this figure apparently. 36. Okay, 36 is a better price for sure. This one is 33. Okay, so I, I guess I'm just wrong. What is the difference now? I have to actually look into this. Uh, wow, I'm confused. The bases are different? What's going on? Acrylic nameplate. Okay, so that's what we just saw here. And then I guess this one has the big base. Would you really want to buy a figure without a base at all? I don't know, the base looks nice. This is rather fancy looking, very modern, very sleek. The colors are great too. Uh, there's no way I wouldn't buy this base and just cheap out on uh, the little name plaque. However, it is nice of them that if you don't care about it, you could save like 30 bucks or 3,000 yen. So that's really, I don't know, forward thinking, but I'm wondering how many people wouldn't want a base for their figure. Uh, Cause if you put this on the wrong surface, you're gonna scratch up the paint. Uh, not that you can't scratch up the paint on like a figure's base like this. Uh, but hey, got options now. Comes out on February uh, 2025, which, yeah, that sounds about right. I see Mimeyoi delay so many of their figures, so maybe don't expect this until June of 2025. But she's a good one. Very cultured, very YouTube clickbaity. You know, if you buy this figure, you're gonna have a pretty popular video as long as you could take some nice shots. So, yeah, cool. 
for some reason this month we have some binding figures on AmiAmi, Ami. not something you often see, though it wouldn't be the first time that we did. Uh, so I'll highlight them for you, can't really go through the gallery for you guys as we are on YouTube right now, and I would rather not edit the photos and post. If you're interested in these figures, you could find them very easily. The name is right here, of course. So here we have Binding Creators Opinion Catherine White Bunny Version, one-fourth scale. Might be another color, but uh, since I don't collect binding figures, I don't know of the other color. But she's 38,500 yen. I feel like most people would agree that binding figures, stuff like this, just feels more like a better value than freeing when they used to be priced at around 38,000 yen. Uh, just because the outfits are a little bit more creative and you get a cast off option as well. Uh, I guess at the trade off of them always being OC characters, or at least I, I think so for the most part. Uh, whereas freeing typically deals with like the licensed characters and whatnot. Though not always, but she's very pretty. I could dig this one for sure. Uh, I love her eyes, even though you can only see one of them. But the eyelashes really grab my attention. There was also, where is my tab? This girl, who I find pretty attractive as well. We have Shayna Rodia Bunny version, one fourth scale, for again, 38,500 yen. Nothing super creative here. Kind of reminds me of the Teddy Bunny from earlier by Freeing, because she's holding the tray with the drink though really only one doesn't look as good in that aspect. But I love this metallic green. We don't really get a lot of metallic green paint jobs, at least on the figures that I talk about. Uh, so it's a really eye-catching color for me. I think she looks good. I just realized I was about to go through the gallery for that one, so I'm gonna stop so I don't struggle later when I have to edit this for YouTube. But uh, I mean, it's, it's again, you know, very well endowed girl. Chest is humongous on this one, butt's also very nice as well as the, uh, the suit digs in and whatnot. Uh, but I think a lot of it does just come down to, like, the face, and I like her pointy elf ears. Uh, you know, because a lot of anime girls, especially from Binding and anything when you go to plus 18 areas, they're gonna have bigger chests and wider hips. So that's nothing creative, right? It really just comes down to, like, the artist and how they draw the girls. So I like this one. Something about this art style. It's definitely a good. You know what? I, I could dig this one. Uh, there's also another lewd figure I'm going to talk about, which is this girl. Her chest is probably the biggest. This is Autonomous Doll Bamidu, illustration by Kanko, 1 6 scale by Nocturnus. Now, this girl looks a little weird. Uh, I don't think this actually is a cast off. However, you would still probably need to explain this one if you had friends or family over. Uh, yeah, so the thing here is, is that she's a doll, like she's got joints, but it's not a posable figure. They just sculpted in the joints for the knees and the elbows and the shoulders and whatnot. Even her fingers have a little bit of that. Kind of makes them look skeletal, like a little skeleton fingers. It's a bit hard to see uh, in some of these photos. This one should be pretty good for you. But I think the main point here that I just want to get across very quickly is that even if she was like fully clothed or like the chest size was reduced dramatically, this would still be a very unique figure as far as like scales go because it's got joints but it's not articulated. I find that very interesting. So I wanted to point this one out for that reason. Okay, let's talk about Claynell next. They actually had one of my favorite figures this month. But before we get there, let's talk about a new Ryza figure, the Summer Adventure version for 22,000 yen. I'm gonna keep this one a bit brief. I don't really like this that much, and it comes down to two main reasons. The colors are strange to me. I feel like I have not seen a Ryza figure with this palette. Everything is like familiar, just something feels off about these colors. Like they're not the correct colors, like the top and the hair specifically. I don't love it right now. Could just be like the way they took photos of this figure, but I don't know. And the other thing I don't really like is her face, which doesn't really capture Ryza for me. I, I just don't love it, the mouth shape, the eyes, something just a little off there as well. I can really appreciate them including the staff because a lot of the figures don't and it looks pretty good. Uh, and the shorts seem like they're insanely thin, but yeah, just not really the biggest fan of this one. I would just recommend like the altar one instead if you want like a simple Ryza figure or one of like the Wonderful Works figures because they'll have the staff I'm pretty sure, uh, even though it might not be this specific design. 
but not a fan. Unfortunately, Rise has got so many nice figures and this one just doesn't really work for me. Next up, we have Kurumi for 25,000 yen, which is pretty expensive. Uh, however, you do get a fairly involved base here, Tatami mat, the pillow, Xbox controller, a tablet with a little keyboard on it, and this big chipmunk beanbag plushie, whatever it's supposed to be. Uh, even some like windows on the uh, the tablet there, which is a nice attention to detail. I'm glad it's not just blank. Uh, she's also eating like a rice cracker, maybe? Not sure what the uh, snack of choice is. I feel like it's cute. It's simple as far as like, I guess, Kurumi's sculpt goes. They added a lot of flourishes here, and I can definitely appreciate that. But the big figure from Claynell for me was Power from Chainsaw Man. Now the price tag on this one really took the breath out of me. 35,000 yen, and you're not gonna get a discount on this, I'm pretty sure, is extremely expensive. Let me get to a full shot of this one in frame here. I would say that this is my favorite Power figure I've seen so far. I think it just nails everything it needs to. But the price tag is really like, eh, I don't know anymore. I don't know if I could jump on this one because the shipping is likely also going to be astronomically high uh, considering the blood scythe as it literally materializes and it's just spiraling all that blood. It looks so goddamn awesome. I love it. Even just like the plastic they used there looks super good. Uh, and the base is a bunch of the um, like the devil guts, the demon guts down there. Uh, kind of reminiscent of that episode where she smacks one of them with a giant mallet. Not sure if that's supposed to be the reference because it's a scythe instead of a hammer. But I just love it. It's just like a literal screenshot, a freeze frame of her summoning the scythe. And I think that is so goddamn good. Uh, and I also just love the colors on her, just like the flow of everything. This one is super dynamic, super action packed. I love it. But I currently have two power figures on pre-order right now. And it's not like I need three. Uh, I mean, hey, Chainsaw Man, Power, I'm down to buy more figures for, but I don't have either of them yet, and I'm not really sure what I want to do, but I, I feel like Claynell really understood the assignment here. They just nailed her. The face, the expression, perfect, hair, perfect, outfits, the work uniform, colors look super good. I think I already said that. I'm kind of going in circles here, but I don't know, man. You got the personality down. You got the energy of the series down. You got like the blood that you want in a Chainsaw Man figure. It's not covering her, which I guess is a downside, but I don't think there is a power figure where she's covered in blood. I mean, clearly this is like the start of a battle, right? So you don't need battle damage. That makes sense to me. But yeah, I would have no brainer bought this if it was just like, I think my breaking point would be like 28. That would have been a lot, but I would have been like, okay, I'm gonna get this and cancel another one, and then I'll be happy. Because the freaking Amakuni figure is like 27,500, and they're doing way more here, not to mention that it's just more visually striking. Just like the guts, like, circling her for whatever reason, that's awesome. And I don't know, again, that blood is just so mesmerizing. Just love how it's spiraling around the, the pole of the scythe. I love it. I, I really do. But I'm not about to get myself wrapped up in three power figures. I don't want to do that right now. I could see myself breaking down and pre-ordering it. But I know deep down I shouldn't. Because I, I already have too much invested right now with other figures. But we'll see. Moving on. Next up, let's talk about Amakuni. Here we have Tatsumaki as well as Fubuki from One Punch Man for just about 25,000 yen. Now, these were on my wish list. But I'm not gonna lie, I was expecting these to be a little bit cheaper. These are very simple figures, very nice looking, I know Amakuni's gonna deliver on them, but it feels like Amakuni, man, they're just so hard to work with. Uh, they make a lot of figures I like, but they're always just like a bit more expensive than I really want to commit to. And while I do like One Punch Man, I'm not like desperate to get figures for it, so I feel like I'm actually gonna skip out on these two and just see how they do on the aftermarket. Uh, I will say, you know, I don't think Fubuki really had figures besides, like, some prize figure stuff. And this looks nice. I kind of wish her face looked a little bit prettier to me. I don't know. I don't love it. Uh, but the outfit's good, for sure. And I like how the, um, the inside is lined with a nice blue. And the boots look really good, too. Uh, definitely nice body sculpt and all that, but there's just something about her face that throws me off slightly. Looks a bit better up close, though, which is definitely a plus for me. However, Tatsumaki... Uh, she's definitely had a few figures at this point, Freeing made an old, like, 1-8 scale, which was pretty good. And then Belfine made their figure, which I really wasn't a big fan of. I think it recently came out, but I, I was never gonna buy that anyway. 
um, the way they did, like her levitation and like her hair, like the strands floating up a little bit, is so much better here. But man, nothing really justifies 25,000 yen here. I, I do like her dress once again. You know, just the way it's like flapping down, kind of wrapping around the front and back of her. It looks appealing, not gonna lie. They did a good job there. Uh, but there's so much less plastic involved compared to the Fabuki figure, and yet they're the exact same price. I can't stand it when figures cost the exact same price just because it's part of a line, when clearly one costs way more to make, in my opinion, because they're just more plastic. That just makes sense to me. Uh, I guess there's some, like, translucency plastic here that Fabuki isn't going to have, but I can't imagine that justifies making the price equal across the board. Also, she's going to be levitating, but they're not doing anything with the base. Like, there's no rocks floating around it or whatnot, just to kind of hide the fact that it's an acrylic piece of plastic lifting her up. So, you know, she's just kind of there. She's just kind of floating, but you're, you're not getting that, like, sense that she's using her telekinesis. You just know. Like, you know because you know the character, but the, you know, the manufacturer, the sculptors, they're not really trying to convince you. Uh, it's just based on previous knowledge. So, I'm a little bummed. Nothing really about the sculpts too much. Uh, yeah, sure, I wish the base was a little bit more intricate and whatnot. There is no base here. It's just gonna be a basic disc. But it's really just the price. If they were like 20,000 yen, I would have given them a thumbs up and hit that pre-order button. Because most of the time, Amakuni figures, at least the ones I look for, they don't drop in price. I don't know why. They do drop on the aftermarket, if you're lucky. But Ami Ami, they just like hold on to these for so long. Uh, just hoping that someone will buy them for full price. So yeah, just gonna wait and see. However, they're also putting out the tour guide from the Underworld from Yu-Gi-Oh! for 23,000 yen. And I like this so much that I might just buy it, even though I do think this is also a little overpriced. Apparently this character is very popular. I would not know, I don't play the card game anymore. But I guess that does explain why they're making this figure in the first place. They just wouldn't make a random card if nobody liked the design of it. But it does feel like a prime example of something that could slip under the radar and then eventually become hard to find. But also at the same time, it could just be something that, you know, like nobody really cares about because it's 23,000 yen and they ask too much money for it. So everybody just holds off and then it just drops in price eventually. Who's to say for sure? Whatever the case may be, this design is cute as hell. Love the colors of it. Her hair looks exquisite. Such a nice shade of red, but also gradating into this like pretty bright purple. Kind of subtle because it's like a tiny portion of the tips, but you can see it as the figure turns around. Just love the outfit too. Just decorated with these skull and crossbones on the bag, on the hat, which has some like flames coming out of the eyes. I think that's awesome. Uh, I don't know. It's just like a cute demon girl from hell who's just trying to help you on your way. And then you also get the little guy down here who I keep forgetting his name in English, but I guess it's Sangon. It's actually just Critter in Japanese. I called him a Critter last time and that was officially correct because that is his name in Japanese. But, uh, you know, that's a bonus for sure. I do like the Yu-Gi-Oh figures when you get a little monster included with them like uh, Jaden and Chaz. I mean, I am trying to build a Yu-Gi-Oh collection. I don't have that many figures, unfortunately, only three, in fact, but I'm working on it. Even though I don't know this girl, it would be a nice add to the collection for sure. But, ah, man, 23. There's not a good justification for it. I feel like Amakuni never justifies their prices and all of their stuff is exclusive, so you never get a discount and you don't have any other option but to buy it from Ami Ami. Who knows if the yen will bounce back by December 2024 and then I have to pay way more for this than I want to. But it's certainly one that I, I feel like I'm going to pre-order this, but like slightly begrudgingly. I don't know, sometimes a design just works for you and then like the justifications, they don't matter. You just do it. Not the end of the world, as long as you can afford it. So, uh, I mean, if I buy it, I'll make a video for it. There you go. Let's move on. I thought this was pretty cool. Jonathan and Dio, a 1-8 scale by Sentinel from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 1. Now, JoJo figures typically are only made by like one company. I, I think it might be Metacom Toy. Uh, if it's wrong, I'll put it on screen right now. Uh, I know like, you know, Good Smile has made Nendoroids before, but typically most of the stuff is handled by one company. So it's kind of cool to see that Sentinel is stepping in and making a scale figure of Jonathan and Dio. Now it's just Dio's head, iconic scene and whatnot, embracing the head, looking a little bit, uh, you know, dead as some shrapnel and whatnot is sticking out of his body. 
Uh, interestingly enough, there is a bonus faceplate, which might be a little hard to get at this point. Uh, it's not in this gallery. I don't remember where I saw it, but I'll put an image of it on screen. I believe he's like looking upwards. So it's a completely different vibe, which I really do appreciate. Uh, the price is pretty good for this. Now it's only a 1-8 scale, but 20,000 yen for a big burly man seems okay as far as prices go. Just depends on if they deliver in terms of the paint, because I do like the sculpt. I, I think it also looks pretty accurate in terms of the, uh, the art style of the characters. We can get a somewhat decent look at Dio's face in some of these photos. Not so much his mouth, but the eyes look pretty good if you ask me. Uh, I dig this, I really do. What should I click on next? Here we have the Red Eyes Black Dragon Holographic Edition from Yu-Gi-Oh! by Mega House. Now this is actually a re-release, but a bit of a repaint, right? Holographic Edition, I guess, implies that the paint job is going to be a bit more shimmering or metallic, something like that. Uh, I don't have the original figure in front of me, but these photos certainly make him look a, a bit shiny which is cool. Red Eyes Black Dragon is also just sick, and I don't think this price point is too bad. Uh, and the figure is decently big, 325 millimeters, but that is up to the wingspan, I'm pretty sure, and they're pretty high above his head, so maybe it's not gonna look too big. But I could dig it, you know, dragon design with like really intricate paint and whatnot, and just, you know, very heavily textured wings and scales and whatnot. Seems like a cool pickup. Alright though, we're nearing the end of the video. A uh, couple more that I just want to highlight very quickly for you guys. Megaman Rock Version 1-7 Scale by Katakawa for 15,400 yen. This, I believe, is a re-release, which would explain the cheap price. Plus, I feel like I've seen this before. Uh, I could have sworn I saw this on Good Small Company's page and then I couldn't find it. Really don't like what they did to that website, but if you missed this announcement, there you go, you can get her for August for a pretty damn good price. Next up, this one says Papers Presented, but on MFC it says Apex, so this is probably an Apex figure, which is a good thing because this looks pretty nice and I feel like I can trust them more than a company I've never heard of before. This is Shining Nikki, I believe her name is Nikki, uh, for just about 23,000 yen. Really cute colors on this one, the two shades of pink and this really light green, I think they mixed together very well. Plus this base looks amazing, this like wispy cloud effect as it, you know, kind of spirals up the figure. Very eye-catching. Good stuff for sure. Never heard of this series before, but you're probably in pretty good hands if Apex is actually making this one. Next up from Azur Lane is Tosa Hometown Zest version, 1-7 scale, for 29,200 yen. Very expensive, but you're getting like the lounge chair on the beach. The beach feels a little phoned in. It's like a drawing of the beach, which is a little different, uh, depending on how that's actually, like, I don't know, painted on. Could look good, but not exactly what I would have expected. Uh, but yeah, then there's also the fact that she's got, like, I don't know, six, eight tails, something like that. Not exactly sure, but that's definitely contributing to the price. We have two figures from Magi Arts. The first one is Kirin Yu, a 1-6 scale for 21,000 yen. And the other girl is Leopard Cat Maria, 1-7 scale for 26,600 yen. Bit of a difference in price, but I guess the base is more involved here with the uh, the suitcases that she's stepping on. The outfit has, uh, I guess like her apron is draping all the way down. Pretty chunky piece of plastic. Also, she's got like that leopard tail, which honestly, I don't think the tail looks that great. Her hair looks very good, but I also think her face looks a little strange. I don't know, I don't love the face, but she does have like a, a creepy appeal to it, at least in my opinion. Very like striking eyes and the color's good, just a little different uh, and not to my particular taste. This girl on the other hand, I really dig this design, a mix of like traditional and modern. She's wearing like a Chinese dress that also doubles as like a apron for some reason, but also some sneakers, very stylish in a strange way. Uh, I will say, some of the details on this figure leave a little bit to be desired, like I enjoy the black nail polish, but it looks a little cheap, even in these photos where it should be like the best example of their paint job. And the tail, while I like that she has a tail, there's no like scales on it, maybe I'm wrong that she's like not a dragon, I thought she was. Looks a little too smooth, with just some like fur sticking out of it, uh, so maybe she's not the uh, the mystical creature that I thought she was. But I will say, 
Uh, overall, I do dig this design. I feel like it's pretty creative. I think she's cute. I like the bun hair. I think the shading on her hair is very good as well. But I want to add here, and I don't think these are on Ami Ami, but both this figure and the leopard, they have like one-fourth versions. Um, and I think they're being sold on other websites, which I'll put on screen right now if I'm correct. And they're like way more expensive. I, I think they're around like, I think this girl's like 60,000 yen or something. And uh, Kirin is closer to say like 39,000. Uh, so you have options now if you like these designs, but you want something a little bigger, you can actually do that for like triple the price or double the price. I, I don't have these numbers in front of me, but you get the idea. Uh, you don't have to settle on these scales if you collect uh, certain sizes more than others. Goldenhead put out a figure this month, Azur Lane's Kronstadt. Begin the rush, one six scale, probably said that completely wrong. 26,700 yen. Uh, this is the girl who I guess is a cop, maybe? I mean, she's got cuffs and a badge, but also the shirt is just completely open so that you can see her bra. Her hair is nuts. It's so long. Turns into a nice icy white towards the tips. This expression is definitely unique, the wink, where she's also looking a little mad <laughs> about it. Almost feels like she should come with a bonus faceplate. Uh, also a mole, there you go, just to catch your eye a, a little bit more if you weren't already staring. I think there is actually an exclusive version, though I don't know what comes with it. Let's see if it loads. I guess the internet is very bad today. It does not seem like she comes with a bonus faceplate. Okay, there you go. Here we have Arina Tachibana, 1-7 scale by Plum. Her face looks so funky uh, from a lot of angles. Here is the original illustration. And then, I don't know, man, she's got like bug eyes. I, I don't love it. Also, I find it odd that the hair color is completely different from the illustration. Like, yeah, this is probably a very light pink strawberry blonde, something like that. Uh, that's probably not even correct. I don't know my hair colors, but this is just straight up pink and it don't look right and it bugs me. Next up is Mari Makinami, 1 7 scale by Wanderer, 17,400 yen. From Eva, I wasn't a big fan of the Asuka figure in this series, and I'm not a big fan of the Mari one either. It doesn't look terrible. The pose is a little strange, I guess. I don't know. They just want to show off both the chest and the butt. I understand. I get it. I uh, hate the hair because it's mostly translucent. But, you know, it's not like her face is that bad or anything. And I think the colors are solid on the plug suit. I like the shading around the knees. That's a, a pretty nice touch there. Not exactly sure what she's holding on to. Is it supposed to be like a whip or something? Kind of looks like a gas pump. Like you pulled out the top and you just are whipping this thing around. I don't know. You could teach me the lore of Eva if you would like to, but I don't think it's going to change too much uh, for me on this figure. There, there's probably better Mari figures out there, but at least the price is good. Nothing to complain about, at least when it comes to the price. Spirit Tail is up next. They got two figures, but boy howdy are they in the hot seat lately. Now, it's not even about Bridget, right? I did make a video on the Bridget figure they released, and yeah, I was a little disappointed, but it really wasn't that bad of a figure. And I've grown to like it a little bit more over time, even displaying it behind me over there. I don't know if you could even see that. However, after I made that video, I was informed that around the exact same time, they released their Miku Special Day 39 version. It's the Miku that's sitting on the throne, right? And apparently that release was a bit, like, catastrophic. Like, they really messed up on that one, apparently, to the point where they're actually giving customers replacements, like, entirely new figures when they eventually fixed the colors and I think the facial features, which is what I read, I, I think, on MFC, which is just nuts to me. I've never seen, like, a company mess up so bad and actually own up to it to the point where they're going to replace the figure entirely. That's great to see. The customer service is fantastic. I'm not sure how that works for like customers outside of Japan, but if you do own that figure, then you probably know more about this situation than I do. Uh, and if you don't, go to the MFC page of that figure and you could probably find out more. So all that to say, I don't know how much I want to get behind Spiritel at this point. Uh, I think that was their newest figure that they did release. Uh, maybe there's been one in between this time, but man, I don't know. They're kind of messing up. Like, this character in particular, uh, Nejire, has super long hair, and I already have a problem with the way they do their hair. I say that every single time I open up a figure of theirs, or I just look at them at, like, event shows and stuff like that. And I just have to imagine 
that they're gonna mess up her hair here. There's a lot of like translucent plastic for the effect pieces, the clouds down there, which have very nice cute colors, but do I trust them at this point? I don't know. It's a very fun design though. I think they've done a stellar job with the, uh, the My Hero Academia figure so far. I think all of them have turned out very well. So I'm hoping the Miku was like a, just a one-time problem thing and they just get a little bit better at their hair sculpts. But on top of that, there was also this girl, uh, Sheena, Mahiru Sheena, rather, the Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten, Sailor One Piece Dress Version, which is lovely, but it's another figure where I have to point out, her hair looks great here, but will it look that great on the final product? Like, if I was a fan of this series, I wouldn't pre-order this after getting the Bridget, because while the Bridget figure wasn't that bad, the one flaw of it really was the hair, and that was a short hair sculpt. Like, they didn't have that much to mess up. Here, things can go very poorly, very fast. So, while I love the concept, I just love how adorable this all looks. I like how they changed the hat so it's not, like, really flying too high, but it also hides the acrylic behind her that keeps the hat in place. I think that was a smart idea. Sunflowers look great. The petals, the leaves, very vibrant stuff. It's kind of surprising that the dirt is so dark on this figure. You would think it would be a lighter shade, but it's not really that conflicting because it matches the color of the inside of the flower. So that's okay. Not a big deal. Uh, the prototype is perfect, but again, when the company messes up so much, you really can't help but hesitate on like future pre-orders with this company. Uh, and right now, I think there's two on like the horizon that I want to get or might get, but now I don't know if I will. And that's Kana from Oshinoko and Elfelt from Guilty Gear. Really hope they don't mess up the Elfelt figure because I could skip out on the Kana. Plenty of people are going to make a Kana figure or companies rather, but you know, Guilty Gear is not that lucky. Uh, so, you know, just gonna sit on the fence here, just kind of view what's happening with this company over the, uh, the course of the next few months. And I hope things improve for them because what I own, I mostly like. I gotta say, they did a great job with most of their releases, but only suddenly did things turn south. So, yeah, very awkward. Uh, good prices if these do turn out, uh, as they are advertised though. 25000 for both of them. Q's Q also put out two figures this month. The first one was the Armored Trooper Vodum's Chiriko QV 1-6 scale for 27,800 yen. Little pricey, but this guy's pretty tall, about 31 centimeters. Now, 1-6 scale, male character, and he's also standing on like the remains of one of the mecha mech suits, the Vodum's. Unfortunately, I have not seen this series, so I don't know the uh, specific wording I should use here, but the base looks excellent if I could find a photo of it. I love just how damaged it is. Just the environmental storytelling here is pretty ace. Uh, just how like worn down, chipped away, broken up. Even the lens over here is cracked, which I think is a excellent touch. Other than that though, the suit looks excellent. The shade of orange and all those wrinkles on the pants, around the knees, and around the collar too. Just looks superb. Excellent sculpt across the board. Uh, and the brown for like a bit of contrast on the suspenders, the belts, and the, the shoulder pads. Love that stuff. But I gotta say, probably my favorite part about this figure is just like his hair. It is like a 10 out of 10 when it comes to a short hair sculpt. It looks so crisp in terms of the sculpt itself, the strands, as well as the color. The blue does admittedly make this feel like a retro figure, except with like modern technology to really make this guy as refined as possible. They also gave him his helmet, which is neat. I love the way it looks. That green visor in the front looks awesome. I think Q's Q did a perfect job here. I just wish I knew what this was. Their other figure was Melusine, or Melusine, from Fate Grand Order for 22,250 yen, which is actually a pretty good price for this girl. I'm assuming she's like way shorter, of course. I mean, one seventh scale. But also, she seems pretty petite, 23 uh, centimeters. Seems about right. Like her little scowl, she's got like an angie face, but uh, still don't know exactly what her weapons are supposed to be. They kind of just look like, you know, sheaths that I guess a blade would come out of. Shading, of course, 
you know, Q's Q's gonna deliver. They're one of the best coming out of Japan. I love their work. Something new that we only just learned about this figure though, is that she has an additional like headpiece. I don't think it's a completely new like faceplate or anything, but you could put this little veil in front of her face, the curtain, if you will, with the roses keeping it up. I think that's nice, but uh, yeah, it changes the vibe completely. And I really dig that. I think this looks pretty sick. However, I like her eye decals too much. So if I were to buy this figure, I would probably display her without it, but I don't think you could go wrong with either option. This is just Q's Q delivering a very, very solid Fate Grand Order figure with nothing to really complain about considering the price is solid. But hey, who's to say that it won't get even cheaper considering a lot of Fate Grand Order figures do drop in price eventually. Uh, but yeah, two excellent figures from Q's Q this month. We're just about done, but we have one more figure to talk about this month, and that is Holo Live's Suise from Design Coco for 27,500 yen. That's pretty pricey considering their uh, their Gouda was, I think, around like 22, something like that. I know it was way cheaper than this at the very least. However, you know, times have changed and whatnot, and I think this figure looks fantastic. Not to mention that her outfit is so much more detailed compared to Gouda's. Nothing against her design or anything, but there's just a lot more going on in this, like, jacket that she's wearing. And the base is really neat, too. There's a lot of, like, stage lights projecting, you know, fake light, granted, but these little, like, acrylic pieces with these, uh, angular shapes just, you know, jutting all over the place. Different colors and whatnot. I think it looks awesome. It might even light up. I'm not sure, but it certainly looks like that in this photo. I decided to stop for a second just to a, a sliver of research and it seems like AmiAmi's price is just absolutely terrible. They're not giving you a discount, whereas some other stores are. This is Hobby Genki. I know AmiAmi is the most popular. I love them. I use them all the time. But my God, could you not give us some discounts every now and then? Like, come on. If other companies and stores are doing it, you should be able to as well. Um, but yeah, I think this looks fantastic. I think she looks lovely. I love the colors on this one, especially her bright orange leggings in contrast with the blue hair. I think her face is very pretty and I love that the sculpt is focused on her singing because she makes some bangers. So excellent figure, really not that bad of a price if you buy her anywhere else. And I don't think she has other scales at this point. So might be one that gets pretty expensive on the aftermarket. Feels like you're better off pre-ordering this one if I had to guess. I just have a hunch that this will become eventually pretty expensive unless they re-release it down the line. But who's to say if they will? Uh, but considering her popularity, it would be dumb if they don't. But you never want to risk it if you like a character. So you make that decision. I'm just giving you some advice, but that's going to do it for our pre-order roundup. Good video. I think there was a lot of nice stuff in this one. And for once, I feel like my voice isn't shot, so that's great. If you like this video, let me know down below what was your favorite figure or your least favorite. Or if you just want to talk to me, I'll respond to you most likely. I really do appreciate the feedback and whatnot. And I'll see you guys very soon for the next video. Not exactly sure what that's going to be, but I'm always working on something and I'll try and make it good. So uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye.